Well, I think Quark probably preceded um, the decision to create a series set up north. So here's where Quark came from. Swear to God, this is the truth. Long before I knew what I was going to write or really had any story idea in mind, I had an idea for a guy that I could write about. And in the very beginning, Jake, all I knew about this guy was that he was going to be the kind of man who was so resilient that no matter how far life pushed him down, he would always bob back to the surface and his name would be Cork. Honestly, that's where it came from. Now, I told that to an audience not too long ago. Some smart ass in the audience said, why didn't you just call him Bob? Now, the decision then to create stories set in the North Country came as a result of uh, something we began doing here, my wife and I, shortly after we moved to Minnesota. In the summer, we began doing what everybody in the Twin Cities does in the summer. We began vacationing up north in the great north woods, that beautiful north country. Um, and, uh, and when I discovered, well, there's a place up there called the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness, one of the most beautiful places on the face of the earth. And when I discovered that remarkable territory, I knew this is what I want to write about. So I began spending as much time up north as possible and, um, and doing all of the, the research I can about, could about the place. Um, came to a realization that you can't tell a true story set in the North Country without including the Ojibwe, the Anishinaabeg, uh, as an element of the work. And that's when I made the decision to weave the Ojibwe culture into my stories and eventually the, the decision to make Cork a man of mixed heritage, part Irish American and part Ojibwe. That's how that whole thing developed. If you're looking at somebody of mixed heritage in the North Country, um, they can be Ojibwe Finn, Ojibwe Swede, Ojibwe Italian, Ojibwe German, Ojibwe Russian, you name it, because there's such a huge melting pot of cultures up there. For a variety of reasons, I finally decided that Cork was going to be Ojibwe and Irish. And his name very naturally at that point became Corcoran O'Connor. As I told you, I wanted to, I knew I wanted to set the, my stories up north. And you know, what's the first tenet they teach you in a writing class? Write what you know, right? Write what you know. Well, one of the things that I, I knew about was what it was like to live in a small town. So I knew I was going to create a small town that would be home to Cork. Um, I'm a family man, so I knew Cork was going to be a family man. Um, I've known Minnesota for a long time, so I knew that Minnesota was going to, the essential Minnesota was going to be significant uh, to the story. And after 40 years of living it, I thought, okay, I know, I know about human nature. So this is going to be a story about people first, first and foremost. And, uh, and it all came together then when I created Tamarack County, the fictional Tamarack County. Although there is a real aurora in northern Minnesota, um, it's not, that's not my aurora. My aurora is a fictional creation that is an amalgam of the elements of so many of the north country towns that I have come to, to know and love. I didn't want, I wanted to create a place that people couldn't say it's Ely or it's Babbitt or it's Virginia, um, but that would feel authentic to anybody that knows the north country. Really, that's one of the purposes Cork serves, is to offer the reader an eye uh, and an ear and a nose and sometimes even a tongue uh, to experience uh, the great North Country.